Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic um, and happy birthday Joshua who's just finished their finals. Very good. Um, finals at this time of year? Wow. Well, I mean, that's wrapping up the year for sure. Anyway, happy 24th to you. Now, um, talking of celebrating things, today's puzzle is by uh, Philip Bloomer, friend of the channel for a long time known as Glum Hippo. And uh, he's celebrating... Edouard Lebeau's 50th birthday, just a couple of weeks ago, I think, and Edouard is known to many as uh, Pseudo Canard. He's been very active in Sudoku, again, since we started, maybe before. Um, a very interesting uh, Canadian, or maybe French, constructor. I don't know. But Philip's done this puzzle in tribute, and... Um, being the 50th birthday, apparently the 202010 thing is a bit of a joke to do with the French version of 50 instead of 50, two 20s and a 10. I don't understand that at all. I mean, that might work in Danish, where I think the numbering system has Haltreis for 50, which kind of implies halfway to the third set of 20s. Um, but Danish numbering is... A law unto itself. Now, um, the puzzle title is A E, which uh, with the accents implies to Edward, I think. Um, and there are negator cells in this puzzle, so I am looking forward to having a go at this. Um, this is a very appropriate puzzle in terms of the next two Sudoku hunts we're going to present, we think at the moment, as monthly rewards on Patreon. Because the next one's probably Jay Dyer's um, collection of puzzles with cells like negators or harbors in. And this is a good introduction to that style. And the one after is probably going to be by Glum Hippo. So this combines both of those. And this is a very good day to do this because you have about... Um, 21 hours when, no, less than that, 17 hours when this video goes out to finish off and send in solutions to these cryptic scriptures of the Secret Snake Society hunt curated by Dying Flutchman, which is available, whose puzzle I did yesterday, which is available on Patreon as well. So do join us on Patreon. We are very much hoping, and Simon is working very hard on um, making possible to bring you a Fistamafel hunt sometime around Christmas. So we're really looking forward to that. It will make being a member of the best Sudoku club in the world even more valuable. So do consider having a go at that. Do consider joining us on Patreon. There's all our apps as well you can buy. There's a bit of merch and stuff. Look on the links under the video. But the first one will be to this puzzle by Philip. And the rules are these. Normal Sudoku rules apply. That's one to nine going in every row, column, and box. Digits in cages do not include repeat digits and sum to the indicated total. Hmm. We'll come back to how cages can add up to zero. Uh, digits along indicated diagonals must add to the indicated total. So those ones add up to 20, but we'll come back to these as well. Repeats are permitted along such diagonals. Each row, column, and 3x3 three three box contains exactly one negator cell. Digits in these cells must be subtracted rather than added to achieve the given cage or diagonal totals. So that explains how we can have zero cages. The nine negator cells are also a set of the digits 1 to 9. I think that's how it generally works in J. Dyer's hunt as well. So... There's going to be one of these negator cells in every row, column, and box, and they are going to be a full set of the digits 1 to 9. But as you will guess, this adds an intense level of complication to a puzzle which has very few clues in it already. Two given digits, six cages, four little killer clues. Wow. Um, now... I may pause for a moment to do some coughing and then I will restart my clock and get on with it. So hang on one second. Yes, there may be some pauses as we go for me to cough and splutter. Now, there was once early in the channel's history when we 
were terrified that any cut we did would be seen as us cheating. I think you trust us enough now, thank goodness. Right, I don't know... I don't know much. Okay, I do know one thing. I know that there must be negator cells in each of these cages. With the zeros, it's obvious why there must be. With this five cage, three cells adding up to five, you can't do that with genuine Sudoku digits, especially not if you're not allowed to use two. So what's that telling me? Okay, I, I'm using, per, I'm planning to use green and red. Green for, red for negator cells and green for non-negator cells. And I know that in these columns, all of these are going to go green now because the two negator cells for columns three and four are definitely used up in those two zero cages. It also means there's only one of each in each cage. Now, there must be one in this row in the five cage, so those can go green as well. Do I need the little killer totals yet? I don't think so. These five cages don't need a negator. They could be one, two, three, and four. I haven't got so many negators that I've used them all up for rows five, six, and seven or anything because that's sticking out. Ah, let's have a think about about what, yeah, the makeup of this zero cage. Oh, it's got to have two negators in it. Of course, there we go, of course. It can't just have one. If you had a, a minus nine in this and six other digits, you're not gonna get, you're not gonna stay down as low as zero. So there are two negators in the zero cage. Remember the rules didn't say there couldn't be two negators in a cage, and there are. And that means if there's two negators in that cage and one in that one, that's using up all three for rows six, seven, and eight. So we can green all of those cells to start with. Um, what else does it mean? Let's think about the numbers. You could have a negative nine and a negative eight. We can't have more than two because that would be too many negator cells for rows six, seven, and eight. So there are only two. If they were nine and eight, then the positive cells, which don't include repeats, could be one, two, three, four, five, plus two. So there's two degrees of freedom on that. Okay, so the negators are from nine, eight, seven, and six in this box, because they must add up to at least 15. Don't know anything about the negator here, do we? I mean, the, the positive cells could be as little as one, three, so the negator would be a four, but it could go anywhere up to nine. Yeah, it would just up to nine, actually. Then the positives would be eight, six. Okay, what more do we know? What more do we know about... Oh, these are definitely positive now. Oh, this has to be one, doesn't it? Because there's going to be one in there and at least one in there. There can't be a second one in there or you'd have three in rows six and seven. So that's a definite negator. Okay, so in its box, those ones go green, those go green, these go green in the column as well. Now there's only one cell left in box five to be a negator and it's there. And we can do a lot more green color. Oh, what am I doing? Losing my mind is what I'm doing. Right, we can do a lot more green colouring based on that new negator. That leaves only one place in box two, so that's a negator. I think we said, yeah, that there's only one in each of these zero cages. These all go green as well. Now, one of those is a negator in the five cage, and that stops these being a negator. The only one in row six can be here. That's green as well. We're finding the places for a lot of these negators. One of those is a negator, so those aren't. So one of those is. 
Now the two negators for these columns are used up there, so they go green, one of those is, and then one of these four cells finally. Okay, so these are the locations of the negators. Now, the numbers of them are two numbers that add up to at least 15 in this zero cage. These can't be exceptionally low in the zoo. Oh, I don't know, that could be anything. Right, what else have we got? We've got a three digit all positive 10 sum. Could have a one in it. Oh, we've got, okay, I'll tell you what we've got. We've got a one, two, three, four combo because these five gauges are all genuine. I haven't got much else to go on actually. That is six, seven, eight, or nine, as is the negator here. This cage must include one, two, and three at least, but that's not really telling me anything. Right, I'm gonna need something else. Is this 40 any use? It doesn't feel like it. I don't even know whether I'm sort of shooting for highs or low. I mean, I suppose it's quite a big number. Okay, so let's maximize it. Nine and eight are the biggest two numbers you could put there, positive, 17. Minus one and minus one. No, they've got to be different because all the negatives are different. So minus one and minus two takes us to 14. Plus, can that be a nine? Could be, 23. Um, the biggest positive digit in this cage is a seven because the positive digits can only add up to a maximum of 17. That gets us to 30 plus a nine there. Okay, well this is telling us that, that we get to 39 having assumed a positive nine or eight in the first cell. I think this is telling us that these other purple cells have to be positive. So let's just look at that. Imagine this was negative. So those were negative one, two, three at a minimum, that's six. So we need to make up positive 46 on the rest of the diagonal, 17, 26, 33, 42. We can't get there using that cell. It must be the same with this. That, in fact, couldn't be more than a 7-6 pair, if that, um, 13, 22, 31, 39, 48. What were we having to get to, 46? Okay, hang on, let me just be a bit more careful. If that, oh no, it's if this was a negative, that was 1, 2, 3. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't make sense at all. Yeah, you just can't get there. These cannot be negatives or negators, so they are positive. Now we know that those two are negators. That is green. Um, that's all we can do. Now, can we actually do any of the numbers on this? Right, these two, what am I saying they're the maximum positive digits? If these were one, two, three, and the positives added up to 17, these could add up to 11, that's the most they could be. Then you could have a nine here, that's 20. Negative one, two here takes us down to 17. Oh, this one can't be a one or a two because it's got to negate two cells, so, so let's go again. 11 plus nine is 20, minus three minus one is 16. This I think could be Oh, what is the maximum that that could be? With a minus three we'd need now in the cage. No, what's the maximum it could be? So you'd have a minor, a big minus number. Let's even say a minus nine. That could be an eight. I don't think it can be bigger than an eight. If it was a nine, 
Oh, it could be a nine. Okay, I'm sorry. I was just getting distracted. So those are 11. Nine there. Let's say nine there. We're up to 29. Minus th one, minus three. 25. Wow, these two have to add up to at least 15. The most they can add up to is 17. So that's a degree of freedom of only two on this diagonal. Right, well, I'm going to fill the effects of that in. This we worked out as nine has to be within two degrees of freedom as that. Same here. Now up here, 17 less two degrees of freedom takes us down to possibly 15. Um, these two, 11 is the maximum, so 9 is the minimum. Uh, we can't have a bigger digit than 7. I don't, I don't really like to fill those in. Let's just colour them. They're sort of somewhere between 9 and 11. And I'm going to try and remember that. These, minus 1 and minus 3 at the minimum. So in fact, that one, minus 1, 2 or 3, that one minus 3, 4 or 5. And now this pair adds up to 3, 4, or 5. So they use the digits from 1, 2, 3, 4. This is fascinating. What's going on? Oh, neither of these can be a 7 because of the given 7. That's interesting. And yet they must add up to 15. So they have to have a 9 in? Yes. Yes, they're either 9, 6 or 9, 8. One of those is a 9 and the other is a 6 or an 8. Now, if it's 9, 6 and they add up to 15, these are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And this pair would have to be a 4, 5 pair and that would take away all the degrees of freedom. This would be forced to be a nine. Now, how is that going to work? This will have to be... No, this will have to be four more than that to make the nine work. Okay, that is possible. This is weird. Um, but if that's nine, eight, then these could add up to 11 or 10 or nine. I think. But the nine negator has gone now. It's in one of these two cells, along with eight or six. Is that telling me anything here? No. Now, what's going to get negated here? This is at m least a seven. That is, therefore, at least two more than that. That doesn't help me, I don't think. What about this? This is either, if that's a three, this is two, one. Um, seems to work all right. That's a really interesting puzzle. Um, still think I maybe ought to be able to focus on these a bit more that either add up to 11, 10 or 9. Do they have some sort of interplay with the zero cage in the same rows? I don't think they do. But I'm really not sure about this at all. Um, now, don't worry about the fact that wherever the negators are here, they're not going to contribute to a sum. It didn't say they would have to. What can we do, though, next? This is such an interesting puzzle. Um, that is going to be two, three, or four more than this. I don't think I can use that yet. What about this 20 sum or this 10 sum, or maybe using them both together. This is all genuine digits on the 20 sum as well. I don't know, they're not very, 20 averages out of five a cell. What about the other 20 diagonal then? 
doesn't look desperately helpful. Oh, that has to be two more than that. So this is at least a three. So the rest of them have to add up to at least 23. That doesn't feel useful. Crikey, what do we do next? Have I missed a clue? No, I don't think so. Okay, is it somewhere to do with this little two by two box? Um, or this one? I don't think so. It's not that these have to all add up to five. Um, I'm not I'm not getting this. I'm not seeing what I meant to see here. There has to be a one and a two in these cells somewhere. How about that? These add up to nine or eleven. The totals add up to somewhere between well nine to eleven, somewhere between fifteen and seventeen. Maybe they don't have a two in. Maybe they're one, three, four. These would be a two, seven pair. That could actually work. That's weird and annoying. Um, oh, if this was nine, six, and this was one, two, three, four, five, that's, this would definitely be four, five. These would be maximal nines. These would be minimums one and three. Now, if that was one and three, this would be one, two. This would be high, three or four. And this would be a definite two. So that would be a three. I don't think it works. I don't think it works for this to be one and this to be three. This is reasonably significant actually for the rest of the diagonal if that's right. So let me just work this out. If that was a one and that was a three, this would be two and that would be one. This would be three and that would be two. This was one and that was three. That's a two, that's a one, that's a three and that's a two. Maybe it does work. Okay, that is frustrating. That's probably right then. They probably do have to be kept to a minimum. So is there one of these that I can tell? Oh, both of those. One of those is definitely a nine and they're both looking at that cell. I did not think it was this cell that had restrictions on it because it's not even in a cage or a negator cell. Ah, so that's not nine and that's taken one degree of freedom off everything. So that's not seven. This now can't be three. This can't be five. These have to be at least 16 now. So they definitely include a nine. This says there's no four in those cells. So there's definitely a one in these cells. Now, it was this pair that I'm most interested in. These definitely add up to 10 or 11 now. And that means this can't be a nine, six pair. Doesn't it? If these added up to 10, these would have to add up to at least six. 16 is the minimum, yes. That is a nine, eight pair, that is fantastic. Right, so these do add up to 17 with 10 or 11 there. These add up to six or seven and they definitely include a two and they definitely include a one. Oops, that wasn't what I was trying to do. One in all of them, two in one of those. And the other possible digit is a three or a four. 
these add up to 10 or 11. Now, if they add up to 10, these are 1, 2, 4, and they have to be 3, 7 in that order. If they add up to 11, these are 1, 2, 3, and then they can be 4, 7, or 5, 6 in any order. And we've used 8 and 9 in the old negators. So the most this can be is 7. And it's either 3 or 4 more than this. So 7, 6, 5, or 4 there. The most this can be now is a 4, I reckon. We're down to one degree of freedom on this diagonal. I worked, I did the work to decide that that could be a one and that could be a three. Ah, oh. no, I was about to say if that's a one and that's a four, then we always get a one here. But this could be a two or could it? If that's a two, that's a three by um, having used up the degree of freedom. So that would be a one and that would be a two. Two, three, one, two. This would be three or four. And that, yeah, that would be four, that would be one. Hang on. Yeah, no, it is possible. If that's a two, that's a one. Two, four. No, it can't be two, four. It would have to be two, three, two, one. This would be a one, four pair with one there and four there. Oh, that's frustrating. Okay. Oh, no, here it is again. Now this has become an 8-9 pair. They're looking at that cell. Numpty man. That gets rid of the last degree of freedom. That's brilliant, actually, Philip. That's a 7. These definitely add up to 11. Um, so there's no 3 in them. These definitely add up to six, so there's no four in them. The degrees of freedom are gone on the rest of the thing. So nine is right, one is right, three is right. This is a nine eight pair at the top. Oh, that is fabulous. Uh, nine eight pair, sorry, that's what I'm doing. Now, the three is made up of one, two. This is three or four, but it can't be four, so that's three, that's two. This is now a one, four pair. And look, we're getting the, the negator cells filled. We've had nine, eight, one, and three. This one can't be two. And there can't be a two in those areas, so the negator two is right there. Good Lord. That goes red. These cells go green. We're going to finish off the colouring now. Right. 9, 8, 1, 3, 2. The rest of these negated cells are 4, 5, 6, and 7 in some order. So, in this box, cage rather, 4, 5, 6, or 7 there. Um, what do we know about how they are used. Not enough, not enough. If it's a four, it goes three, one. That does work annoyingly. That would be a two. Now, how about this pair? Don't think we know enough about it. Ah, we now know that these two, this one equals four more than that. So four is not possible here. And this is now odd. It's five or seven. 
and we haven't used those in the negators, so one of those two is a four negator. Be very careful when saying four negator that you don't make the middle consonant voiceless. Um, Come on, let's just keep doing some Sudoku. There's a two in one of those cells by Sudoku. So one of those two is a two. Can it really be there? Yes, easily. Ah, oh, this is fascinating. Now, there's a one three pair going on there suddenly. That's strange, but not. Well, unless they're both looking somewhere again, like these pair kept doing, and I can't see it. There's a seven in one of those cells. I'm just doing Sudoku now. Now, what about this 10? If it didn't have a one in, the two would be there flanked by a three, five pair. But it might have a one in it. Although it won't be one, two, seven then, because it can't have a seven in it. So it's either two, three, five, one, three, six, or one, four, five. That's tricky. That's not actually a giveaway. I don't think this 20 sum is very useful yet either. Ah, oh, what about this one? I don't know. That's not quite everything I'm looking to see either. These aren't very limited, these cells. That one can't be a nine, but doesn't really stop this triple being maximized up to 24, so. Okay, come on, come on, what's going on? One of those is a two now. Okay, let's look at the negators. We've got, oh look, I've got a nine looking at that cell. That's simple enough, I mean. I don't think it's going to do a vast amount in the puzzle, but it's worth doing as it's easy and correct. Um, don't think it does a lot. That pair still don't know this 20 pair. Maybe it can't have the two on it. Two, eight, no, that's nonsense. Okay, we're just going to have to think of something else we've got. What have we got? We've got four in one of those cells. So that digit can't be a four because they both see it. So the four in this box is in one of those. That's quite weird, but slightly interesting. Um, I don't think it really carries anywhere. So, okay, this negator cell, let's do the maths. It's either three and one there. Okay, it can't be that. It can't have a one here because there's a one in those cells and there's a one in those cells and that's like a, a virtual X-wing. Right, so there's no one in this sum. So that's not a four. And now that's a five, six, seven negator triple. So that is a four. Okay, so this adds up to five, six or seven without a one. It can be a two, three pair, in which case it would be that way around. If it was two, four, it would be the same way around. The two would be there. If it's a seven, it's either three, four with the four there because of the three or two, five. So we have got fairly limited possibilities here. One of those two is a six. I can't really do anything with that. Ah, oh, nine here is not in those cells, so it's in one of those two. Come on, keep going. Where's two? Two's in one of those three. Oh, and the other, the other cell that's in one of those two is whatever this is. It can't be there because they're both in the set of negator cells. So, eight must be in one of these. 
Is that all that tells me? That's very disappointing. It is, I think. Come on, these these are telling me something. This one three pair that I haven't used at all. Well, if that was a seven, this would be six or five, and that would have to be two. This would be a three. That would be a one. I'm going to have to go away and cough for a bit, sorry. Right, I think I'm okay to carry on. So we've got this. What was I thinking about? I was thinking if that was a seven, this is a three. If that was a five, this is a one. No, it's better if that's a seven, that's a three, that's the one. Then we get a four here and a one here. I don't know. Oh, if that's a five, then this is a two, three pair. Then that's a seven and that's a three. No, that works all right. I thought I was going to run out of threes. There is a three in one of those cells by Sudoku. Oh, let's go back to these tens and twenties then. Maybe I just need to do more work on ones or something. If there was a one on that, it can't be there because we've got this virtual X-wing of ones. Oh, have we got a virtual X-wing of anything else's now? This is either two, three, two, four, two, five, or three, four. Hmm. It can't be two, three, because that would make that a five and that a one. That would be three and that would be one, which makes that a five. That's pretty complicated, but it works. This can't be two, three, so that can't be five. So we'll take five out of there. This is not a, you know, it could still be a three. It's just the two, three combination that's gone. So five is gone from there. So five's definitely in one of those cells. Oh, and whatever this red negator cell is that goes in one of those, it doesn't go there. So it does go up here. That is five or seven. Now four is in one of those two. I don't know. I feel like I'm tracking random digits around the grid now. Six or seven here. Oh, oh, I've just noticed if that's a five, six pair, that's definitely a seven. If that's a seven, four pair, they're both looking at that cell and it's definitely a five. So they're all bound in together somehow as well. I don't know how. That's close to really giving something. Oh, this is fascinating. It really is interesting. It's just frustratingly difficult for me. Um, so if this was one, three, six, it's either one, three, six, one, four, five, or two, three, five. Ah. So that, of course, where does eight go in this row? Not there, because it can't be in a 10 sum. That's huge, is it? Eight, no, it probably isn't. Eight goes in one of those cells, that's all it does. Okay, that's a relief, because it would have been a really bad spot. Eight goes in one of those two cells, it doesn't go there for the same reason it can't be in the 10 sum. Now, what about the 20 sum then? Is that actually interesting? 
maybe together with the ten sum. So all the cells that go in here, they don't include 9, 8 and 7. So they're from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 30 is made up by 21 minus one digit there and those two. That's not interesting. I don't think so anyway. Um, nine in one of those one in this column is either there or sorry either there or there which is outside the rows six and seven where it's forbidden oh goodness is there really something obvious at this point one four five one three six or two three five So six in this row is definitely in one of these two cells. Can that be a five? If that was a five, that's a seven. This is five, that's one. If this is five, Two, five, seven. That becomes a three. I cannot see it. I cannot see what's going on. Let's look at this column. Two, three, one, four. Five, six or seven in the negator. Oh, there's something clever going on here. Oh, look, there's a one there. So that can't be a one. That's dull. Um, dull of me not to see it, I mean. Two, eight, nine. Ah. That's an overlap between the two twenties. That's just not limiting. I don't think this is limited. Okay, let's just check it at a maximum here. 24 there. Don't see why you couldn't have an eight and a nine there, so. 32, 41, I mean, that's hugely over the necessary. That's not, it's not useful. It just isn't at the moment. Little hard to imagine how it's ever going to do anything other than a bit of final disambiguation, maybe. Oh, I thought when I got this eight, I was onto something I thought would be firing through then. Now, one of those is a one, so that's not a one. It's also not a two. It's also not four or seven. So it's down to three, five or six. If it's three, it could be part of three, one, six or three, two, five. Ah, it can't be six, because that would be a one three pair, that would be a one three pair, and by an X wing, that would be a one three pair, which it can't be because of that pair. Okay, so that's not six. Ah, ah, well, there's only one place for six to go in this row now. It is there in the green yellow cell. That's a five to make up the total to 11. That's a seven, which makes this a three. That makes this a one. That can't be the key to unlocking it. Discovering that that can't be a six, it seems very unlikely. This isn't a one, this is part of a two, three pair. Um, this can't be five anymore. Now, now, this is not one, three, six. It's either one, four, five or two, three, five. It always has a five in it in one of those two cells. Uh, 
If that's a two, that's a two. Then we get two in one of those. Not interesting. Three, seven, two, five, one. Oh, that's a seven, and it's in a negator cell. So that one's a six, and this one's a five. Ah, and the six is a two, four pair. Yeah, that was the key. That is astonishing. That's a seven now. So this is a seven, nine pair. This is a one, five, eight triple. We can put the one in there. In fact, we can put all of them in. One, eight, five. This is a four, six pair that we'll resolve later. That's where three goes. That can't be eight and that can't be five. We'll come back to those. This is a three, four, six triple up here. So that's a five. That places the five. Actually, this row had just placed it. Now, is this a three, two or a one, four? I don't know. One or three there, two or four here. Eight is in one of those. Now, the 20 sum might be getting interesting now. This is eight or nine by Sudoku. This one is one, two, or four. And this one, one, four, five, or six. Now, the minimums, eight, six, one, one, four degrees of freedom. The maximums, nine, six, four, six, if five the other way, that's quite big. How disappointing. But these must add up to 14 or 15. So these must add up to five or six. They've got to include a one, haven't they? No, they could be two, four. Well, this can't be a six if they add up to five or six. Um, right, this is five or seven, this is five, seven or eight, this is seven or eight. Three, seven, two, five, one. So, and weirdly, we cannot finish off that diagonal. <clears throat> we know these add up to five or six, which is either one, four, two, four, or one, five. Actually, this one can't be a four under those circumstances. Oh, so this is the low digit. No, it can be a four. There could be four there and one there. No, 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 no. Right. Six is in one of those. Three is in one of those. These aren't interesting areas. We've got the 40 sum done. We've got this 20 sum to do. 27, if you just take the positives now. This one is four, six, or eight. So somewhere between 17 and 12 of the 27 is used up there, making this somewhere between 10 and 15. That's just not helpful. How does this still work? There's a five in one of those. There's a seven in one of those. It's a nine to come in here somewhere, but I don't know anything about where, do I? I don't think so. Nine, two, three, eight. So I've done all the negators. Have I done all the sums based on the negators, apart from those remaining little killer diagonals? That's so frustrating. Six has to be in one of those two cells. I'm just fiddling around again now. This is so weird. Twos in one of those two. Two, one, three. We've got a five there. Three, four, six triple up here. For that to be a two. Oh, I've got a three looking down at that cell. I mean, that's huge. Now we can't have a one in one of those. That is a two, four pair. Ah, oh, it just takes forever, doesn't it?
maybe it's the illness. Four, six, these are all even, so that's got to be even. They work now, that's not an eight. In fact, we have four, six, nine up here, so that is a nine. Um, let's just take out the corner marks. Right, now, one effectively there, plus four or six is five or seven. So these add up to 13 or 15. That is still not a helpful total. Let's finish off some Sudoku elsewhere. Oh, there's quite a bit to do. Five, eight, actually I've got that four looking down here. Six, four, eight, three boxes being finished. That's a three. Oh, come on, come on. Two, seven, three, eight, four, one is there. Six and nine in those cells. How is that not done? Irritating. Right, that's a naked five. That's a two, three pair. This is a one, nine pair that can go in. This is six, seven, eight as a triple, which is strange. Um, oh, one, seven, six up here. I can put the one in. Now that's on the diagonal, which is four. Five in that box needs to be 15 in this one. And we have seven or six there. So this pair adds up to eight or nine. Without using a one or a three. So if it was eight, it's six, two. If it was nine, it could be five, four. It can't be two, seven. Wow, so it's either 5, 4 or 6, 2. So let's get the markings right. Oh, it's a 6, 7 pair there. It can't be 6, 2. It is 5, 4. Right. 9, let's check this again. 16, 21, minus 7 is 14. That's a 6. And that diagonal, is, all the diagonals are done. Everything else is Sudoku. And that means we can... We can get to a finish finally, I believe. Three and six up there, that looks right. This can't be an eight, that's been available for ages. Nine there, eight, six there. That fixes three, six, that fixes three, two. Then we get two and nine, four, six pair here. And it's finally finishing without another spluttering fit. That's a relief, seven there. Six here should finish it if I've done it right. And there we go. Ah, that took a long time, didn't it? Um, that's a lovely puzzle. I don't think it's as hard as I made it. And I'm going to keep blaming the illness. But uh, always a pleasure to be with you. And I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks very much to Philip for sending it. And thank you for watching, as always, on the channel. And happy birthday, Edouard, as well. Definitely. I think he's Mondurine on... Uh, Logic Masters Germany, as well as Pseudo Canard. Anyway, thank you for watching. Hope to see you again soon on the channel. Bye for now.